Namaste. So we're continuing on with Vichara Sangraham, verse 15. And this is about the knower and the known. Disciple. The mind, sense organs, etc., have the ability to perceive. Yet, why are they regarded as perceived objects? So in answer, Ramana drew the following table. The drik is the knower, and the drishya is the known. Drik and drishya literally mean the seer and the seen object. So, for example, the eye is the knower, and objects like the body, a pot, etc., are the known. However, the sense of sight is the knower of the eye. And similarly, the mind is the knower of the sense of sight. The individual soul is the knower of the mind, and consciousness, or self, is the knower of the individual soul. As shown in the above scheme, since we, the consciousness, know all objects, we are said to be drik, knower. The categories ending with pot are the objects seen, drushya, since they are what is known. In the table of knowledge and ignorance, that is, knower and known, given above, among the knowers and objects of knowledge, it is seen that one is knower in relation to another. Yet, since that one is object in relation to another, none of those categories is, in reality, the knower. Although we are said to be the knower because we know all, and not the known because we are not known by anything else, we are said to be the knower only in relation to the known objects. In truth, however, what is called the known is not apart from us. And so we are the reality that transcends these two, the knower and the known. All the others fall within the knower and known categories. So this is wonderful. Uh, this is a very early exposition of Ramana Maharshi's philosophy. And it comes from his intuitive experience of spontaneous self-realization. It's not book learning. It's drishya, <laughs> directly seen. So this is the best kind of evidence because it is the subjective reality of the self-realized being. So in this reality, we see that what is commonly accepted to be the knower is actually the known, up to the self. The self cannot be known. That's why Ramana said, you cannot see the self. You can only be the self. In other words, Brahman, or the self, with a capital S, is completely subjective. It is never objective. It is never knowable by anything else. And this is why the scientists and materialists will never understand consciousness. <laughs> they can't because they're looking for something objective, something outside that can be seen. But consciousness is never objective. It is always subjective. So it can never be measured or observed, except by the being who is conscious, because he is consciousness. He is the self. He is Brahman. Brahman is the Absolute. 
So this is the truth, the basic uh, formula at the basis of a Dwaita philosophy. A Dwaita means not to. There really is no difference between the knower and the known. Both are subjective only. There is no objective world. It is simply an appearance within the subjective world. So that might be a little too fast here, so let's break it down and go slowly. The seer, the druk, is the knower, and the seen, drushya, is the known object. The seer is the subject, the seen is the object. So, in the case of the eye, meaning the physical eye now, the eye is the knower of externally visualized objects such as bodies and pots and pans. <laughs> he uses that specific example of a pot because Shankaracharya did. He used that example extensively. And the, what is the body? It's a pot where food is cooked, oxidized, and turned into energy for operating the body. So the body is like a pot. In any case, it is seen. It is not the self. It's not the seer. It's an object. It's not a subject. Although the body appears to have consciousness, energy, and to be the doer of actions, in reality, it only reflects the consciousness coming from the self through the mind and so on. Well, we'll get to that in the succeeding examples. The body, in other words, is inert. It is only animate because of the presence of the self. And even then, it's only an appearance. And the proof of this is that it's temporary. It comes into being at a certain point in time, then it endures or persists for a while, and then it fades away and disappears. It's an aggregate, as the Buddha said, which means a lot of pieces put together. And when the aggregate is assembled, then it appears to have certain qualities, such as animation, awareness, thought, and so on. But as soon as those aggregates go out of their proper relationship at the time of death, all those functions cease. It's just like a candle flame or any fire. It burns only so long as the conditions for maintaining its existence continue. As soon as those conditions are broken, changed, or used up, the flame is extinguished, and this is the meaning of Nibbana. Extinguished, gone out. So, let's look at the next layer. The eye is the object, the scene, of the sense of vision or sight. So, in that case, the eye becomes the object, the drushya, the scene. And the sense of sight is the drik or the seer. And then beyond that, the mind becomes the seer, the drik, of the sense of sight and all the other senses. All the senses, the five physical senses, and the sixth subtle sense of thought terminate in the mind. If there is such a thing as a mind, it's really just an aggregate of the senses. So even though we appear to have uh, an assembly of thoughts, 
which and when and, and memories and stuff like that, which I suppose we could call a mind, the monomaya kosha. Actually, this is just uh, another aggregate. And as soon as that time of that aggregate is finished, then it also dissipates. So what next? The individual soul, the self with a small s, says, this mind is mine. So then the mind becomes the drishya, the seen, the known, and the individual soul, the jiva, Jiva means one who is born, becomes the drik, the seer or the knower. And finally, the self with a capital S, consciousness or awareness, is aware of the soul, the jiva, the individual self with a small s. So the ultimate knower Drishya, the seer of everything, is the self, Brahman, Turiya consciousness. See, Turiya is that state of consciousness which has the other states of consciousness as its objects. So the individual, the jiva, is cycling through waking consciousness, dreaming consciousness, and deep sleep consciousness. But the uh, self is always in Turiya consciousness and is conscious of the other states of consciousness. And then even that can go away at the time of self-realization. And the self is only cognizant of itself. This is pure, unconditioned awareness. This is enlightenment. This is Turiya Tita. And that is the ultimate state of consciousness, the ultimate enlightenment. So why is Ramana going through this to show us that whatever we see whatever becomes an object of our vision, of our consciousness, cannot be the knower, cannot be the self. Even he goes as high as the individual soul. And although the individual soul, the self with a small s, is aware of the mind and senses, still he is also the scene in relation to the soul. So what is the knower in one relationship becomes the known in a higher relationship. And why does this matter? Because in gross material consciousness, one thinks the objects of the senses are real and the senses are the seer that is aware of them. But this is not really true. There are many layers, see? There's the objects, there's the senses, then there's the mind, then there's the consciousness, then there's the self, Turiya. And each one becomes the knower of the lower layers, which become the known. So we have to learn to see like this. Not that these objects like the body and the mind and all these individual thoughts and even the individual ego, the soul, not that these are real objects, but they are simply that which is seen by the particular state of consciousness that sees them. They cannot be separated, in other words. The jagrat or dualistic consciousness sees the objects and the world as real. But the mind sees the senses as real and their objects as something within them, within the senses. 
So uh, we made a video not long ago about the actual order of consciousness and its objects. You should take a look at that, and that will explain it further. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.